ladies and gentlemen, this whole thing is turning out to be a joke with these sanctions. Do you know the Russian ruble has already made a rebound after having sanctions placed on them by both the United States and Europe? So these sanctions are a joke. And I also read today that Putin is making Europe pay for their gas in rubles. And he'll probably pull it off because 60% of the gas across Europe comes out of Russia. So the sanctions didn't have any impact on them like they thought it would. Russia's ruble rebound raises questions about sanctions impact. The ruble is no longer rubble. They've been putting, I know Biden has been putting sanctions on them almost every day. Sanction this and sanction that. Sanction, sanction, sanction. And their money already rebound. And the war is, oh, what, 36 days long? And they did it in this short period of time, got their money back on track? So then what's the point with all these uh, sanctions from Europe and, and, and the U.S.? What a waste of time. The Russian ruble by Wednesday had bounced back from the fall it took after the U.S. and European allies moved to bury the Russian economy under thousands of new sanctions over the invasion of Ukraine. So Russia's not really feeling the pain, y'all. <laughs> I think this is hilarious. Y'all spent all this time trying to destroy Russia's economy and just within weeks, their money made a comeback. Ooh, this is embarrassing. Russian President Vladimir Putin has resorted to extreme financial measures to blunt the West penalty and inflate his currency, while the West has imposed unprecedented levels of sanctions against the Russian economy. Russia's central bank has jacked up interest rates to twenty percent, and the Kremlin has imposed strict capital controls on those wishing to exchange their rubles for dollars or euros. It's a monetary defense. Putin may not be able to sustain. Yeah, no, y'all are embarrassed. That's why you wrote that. Oh, he may not be able to sustain it. The fact that he brought his money back and y'all put thousands of sanctions on him, that is a huge embarrassment to the Western nations. But the ruble's recovery could be a sign that the sanctions in their current form are not working as powerfully as Ukraine's allies counted on when it comes to pressuring Putin to pull his troops from Ukraine. It also could be a sign that Russia's efforts to artificially prop up its currency are working by leveraging its oil and gas sector, which is their biggest money maker. Okay, just because the U.S. cut off the little bit they were getting from Russia, there are other parts of the world that did not make that decision to cut off Russian oil and gas. All right, so don't try to make it sound like everybody is doing this. Everybody is not doing it, and they can't afford to do it without their own economies collapsing. The ruble was trading at roughly 85 uh, to the U.S. dollar, roughly where it was before Russia started its invasion a month ago. <laughs> So Russia's money is in the same state right now that it was in before the invasion. So nothing was accomplished by these sanctions. Oh my, woo, this is embarrassing. The ruble 
has fallen as low as roughly 150 to a dollar on March 7th when the news uh, the news emerged that Biden administration would ban U.S. imports of Russian oil and gas. And remember, they also did liquor that came out of Russia. It was a whole bunch of things. But as you can see, all for naught. Speaking to Norway's parliament on Wednesday, Ukraine's president urged Western, Western allies to inflict still greater financial pain on Russia. Well, apparently they can't do it. They can't do it. They have put thousands upon thousands of sanctions on Russia that should have tanked their economy. And as you could see, none of it worked. None of it worked. This only means of emerging Russia to look for peace or sanctions. This is um, what Vladimir Zelensky said in a video message um, recently. He added, the stronger the sanction packages are going to be, the faster we'll bring back the peace. I know, honey, you ain't getting no peace back, y'all. Y'all can keep talking about that pray for peace and peace this and peace that. And and my question to you is, how do you pray for peace when you are in a nation that's so unpeaceful? There's no peace in America. Where's the peace? There's murders going on here every day and your cops are just nothing but an execution squad out on the streets. Y'all kill every single day in America. If you can't even find peace where you live, how are you going to find peace in a country thousands and thousands of miles away? Let me know when you make sense. Increasingly, European nation purchases Russian oil and natural gas are coming under scrutiny as a loophole and lifeline for the Russian economy. For Russia, everything is about their energy revenues. It is half of their federal budget. It is the thing that props up Putin's regime and the war. Mm -mm -mm. So this is according to um, uh, economist Tania Babina of Columbia University, was born in the Ukraine. Uh, Babina is currently working with a group of 200 Ukrainian economists to more accurately document how effective the West sanctions are in stymieing Russia's war making capabilities. The ruble has also risen amid reports that the Kremlin has uh, been more open to ceasefire talks with Ukraine. Well, why would they do that now? Why would they sit down for any talks and you haven't put a dent in their economy? The U.S. and the West officials have expressed skepticism about Russia's announcement that it would dial back its operations. President Joe Biden promoted the success of the sanctions. <laughs> He promoted the success of the sanctions that did not work. Wow. Some of the toughest ever imposed on a nation. While he was in Poland last week, the ruble almost immediately reduced to rubble. This is according to Biden. As you can see, that couldn't have possibly have been true. But see, that's what this is more proof that American news is nothing but propaganda. It is propaganda to make a certain group of people in America to always feel good about themselves, always feel good about themselves, even if they live abroad and in other countries. That's all it's about. It's not about the truth. I have never watched any of the videos online or seen anything on TV that indicates they're talking about this ruble made a rebound. See, they'll keep this out of the news at all costs and make you believe, oh, that small Ukraine is kicking Russia's butt. 
Oh, yeah. See, they'll put that out there each and every day. But if you want the real news, ladies and gentlemen, you got to go out online and seek it out for yourself. Because this nation talk about news being propaganda. America is the propaganda king and queens of the universe. They thrive on uh, propaganda as their news every single day. Mm -mm. Sanctions on Russia's financial institutions and companies on trade and on Putin's power brokers were crushing the country's economy growth and prompting hundreds of international companies to stop doing business there, Biden noted. So as you can see, now that you know the ruble has rebounded fully, now you know all this stuff coming from Biden, all this stuff coming from the media is just a load of fake propaganda. Russian's effort to counter those sanctions by propping up the ruble can only go so far. Really? Really? Well, it got them to pre-war levels, didn't it? <laughs> Woo, America, America, America. You got yet another black eye in this whole thing. So, but Russia's oil and gas experts have continued to Europe as well as to China and India. Those exports have acted as an economic floor for the Russian economy, which is dominated by the energy sector. The European Union and dependence on Russian gas for electricity and heat has made it specifically more difficult to turn off the spigot, which the Biden administration did when it banned the relatively small amount of petroleum that the U.S. imports from Russia. Yes, but those countries that are part of the EU, they heavily depend on Russian gas and oil. And they absolutely cannot turn this off. Yeah, the U.S. turned it off and then they pretty much destroyed the incomes, especially people with low incomes that was not making a lot of money in the first place, it has destroyed whatever little budget they had spending all this money on gas. The U.S. has already banned imports of Russian oil and gas. Yeah, and it's hitting and it passing down the pain to the consumers. And the United Kingdom will phase out um, they're rushing gas by the end of the year. However, these decisions will not have a meaningful impact unless the EU follows suit. So they said as long as the rest of Europe does not eliminate or put a ban on Russian gas and oil, then all of this cutting off the gas in the U.S. is for naught. It's for naught. Mm-mm-mm. The White House and economists have urged uh, the impact of sanctions take time, weeks, or months. No, you know, uh, that sounds like some sore loser talk right there. But y'all, please tell me what you think about this story about the ruble has already made a full rebound from thousands of sanctions placed on them by the EU and the United States. Mm, mm, mm. Please leave your comment and subscribe. Don't forget to hit on the notification bell and I'll see you on the next video. Peace, family.